Mondays at 12. The Night Beat starts right now. And our message is don't come in unless it's a true emergency. That's the message from hospitals and emergency rooms. COVID-19 cases continue to rise and more than 960 COVID patients are in hospitals where bed space is already limited. And this is weeks before we see the true consequences of this current surge, according to one of the area's leading medical experts. The night team's John Paul Barajas with another plea for folks to mask up and get vaccinated. Emergency rooms and hospitals are maxed out and people with non COVID emergencies are starting to suffer because of the extreme demand on our health care system. The hospitals are full and we're not even um, halfway to the peak of our surge yet, and we're seeing a doubling of the hospitalization rate every 10 days. Dr. Ruth Berggren with UT Health says that doubling every 10 days has been going on since the middle of July. She shared this graph of COVID hospitalizations over the months, adding she believes the steep incline we're on now is greater than what we saw back in November. I was just on the phone with the director of our emergency medicine department, Dr. Riviello, and he told me the truth which is that there are just record breaking numbers of people in the emergency room and also in the hospital. According to Dr. Berggren, on top of the growing number of COVID patients in hospitals, they have lots of non COVID patients as well. And she says it's only going to get worse. They're going to be strained to the point where we're not going to take good care of people with strokes, heart attacks and car accidents. And I wish I didn't have to say those things, but I need people to understand this is where we are. She broke down the numbers for us. Over the last four weeks, only 5% of hospitalized patients have been vaccinated, meaning the rest of them are unvaccinated. She couldn't stress enough that regardless of vaccination status, we should be masking up and that if you haven't already, to get your shot. In San Antonio, we have zero deaths in the vaccinated population. So we are seeing 100% protection against dying if you were vaccinated. Sorry about those audio issues there. That was John Paul Barajas reporting. One COVID-19 patient also making a plea tonight. The single mother who did not get the vaccine now saying she wished she had. Monique Chavez has been at the hospital for about a week and is on oxygen to help her breathe. She says she fell for the misinformation on social media and rumors about the vaccine side effects. That was one of my biggest mistakes is not taking into consideration, doing a little bit more research. This is very serious. This is a life changing experience for me. And Chavez plans to get the vaccine once she is out of the hospital and recovered. The mother of two going on to say everyone needs to know the importance of being vaccinated. And you may also receive a gift card of up to $100 if you get the vaccine. Metro Health is planning to offer the new incentive at its pop up vaccine clinics. They are just waiting for the federal grant money to be approved so it can go toward this effort. You can read more about this right now at KSAT.com. Loss of appetite, sleep, and sadness, all signs experts say may be an indication that your child is feeling anxious about returning to school. The recent surge in COVID-19 cases is an extra stressor families might be feeling. And take a listen to some of the advice experts are offering. We have four of them that are ready to go back to school. Enjoying the last days of summer fun, there's no sign these kids are worried about the return to the classroom, but some parents definitely are. Yeah, I am. Yeah, which is why I would prefer virtual learning. These parents say they can only encourage their kids to mask up and hope others will too. We can't stop living. You know, we, we have to do our part. Just remind them that, you know, we have to look after each other. But Mary Beth Fisk with the Ecumenical Center says kids can reflect their parents' feelings, especially if you have the jitters about the return to the classroom. It's important that you um, are also looking internally at yourself because sometimes that reflection comes out in your kids. The signs that your child may be anxious include loss of appetite, not sleeping well, sadness, crying or refusal to go to school. Even nausea or dizziness may be a sign of stress. Validate your feelings of your child. It's important uh, to focus on what you can control and what they can control. She says help them be prepared with supplies, but also with what to expect in the classroom with COVID-19 protocols. Young kids 
kids and adolescents have different concerns about the return, listen to them. Don't try to necessarily rescue them out of every situation. Help them to build up their own skills so they can cope in uh, these times where there is stress because that will certainly serve them well in life. The signs of school and COVID anxiety may not be evident on the first day. As um, schools are opening and, and kids are going back to school, we're going to uh, have a better uh, measurement on how much anxiety that there is. And she encourages families to openly recognize a child's fear. Make your home as stress-free as possible and encourage activities for your children that help them to relax or relieve stress. And if you still need help, seek a mental health specialist. And new tonight, new guidance from the Texas Education Agency. The TEA saying remote learning can be offered to a student who tests positive for COVID-19 or is a close contact to a person who has COVID. Testing can be done at the schools with a parent's permission. The guidance seems to be at least partially based on last school year when the Delta variant did not exist in the U.S. as it does now. The TEA says based on last year's low transmission data, schools will not have to contact trace, but positive cases will need to be reported to health officials. The TEA says vaccinated individuals will not be considered close contacts. Any new piece of COVID related legislation is expected to be added to the upcoming special session in Austin. The current session put on hold after Texas House Democrats went to Washington, D.C. to try and stop a measure that adds restrictions when voting. Governor Greg Abbott plans to renew the special session this weekend and add a couple of items on the agenda. That includes legislation that would keep mask wearing and COVID-19 vaccinations voluntary in public schools amid this pandemic. The governor already issued an executive order to that effect, but this proposal would become state law if passed. Abbott also wants lawmakers to begin handing out millions in unspent COVID relief money for things like health care staffing needs and vaccine administration. And we are tracking the trends amid this latest surge of coronavirus cases, hospitalizations, and the average number of cases continue to rise. You can follow the data online at ksat.com. Just click on the coronavirus tab. There you can also sign up for daily updates straight to your inbox. A woman shot and killed two men injured. Investigators believe they may have a new lead in this case. 28-year-old Serena K. Bain died Tuesday night after she and two men were shot at a home near Loop 1604 and Roddy Road near Elmendorf. The Bear County Sheriff's Office now looking for this man. 37-year-old Fernando Rojas is considered a person of interest in the case. Investigators say he may also go by the name Beans. He is considered armed and dangerous, so if you know of his whereabouts, call the Sheriff's Office at 210-335-6000. All eyes will be on the Otis McCain trial as it resumes tomorrow with closing arguments. But today, during day six of the punishment phase, a psychiatrist took the stand. Dr. J. Douglas Crowder has been on the case since 2017. He was questioned by both the defense and state. The defense focused on McCain's mental health, while the state tried to show a pattern of erratic behavior, even asking questions about when McCain attacked a bailiff in court. But the situation was that he had just received the guilty verdict um, for a variety of reasons. I think he had desperately hoped that wasn't going to happen. After the closing arguments, it'll be up to the jury to deliberate. Remember, their options are life without parole or the death penalty. The trial resumes tomorrow at 9 a.m. And as always, you can watch a live stream of the proceedings at our website, ksat.com. Kidnappings, robberies, and scams, it's what one woman came across as she left her family behind in hopes of making it to the United States. The single mother, only known as Andrea, made the trip from Ecuador. She is one of hundreds of migrants that arrived at the San Antonio International Airport, all legally seeking asylum. About 100 to 500 migrants arrive daily. The city of San Antonio working with nonprofits like the San Antonio Food Bank to help in this humanitarian effort. Food, blankets, and hygiene kits are handed out to them. Now, there is a daily need for volunteers to help these migrants. If you would like to sign up, we have a link on KSET.com.
We've had questions over the COVID-19 booster shots come into the newsroom. Still ahead on the night beat, a new strategy being discussed for the nation. What the FDA is saying coming up. And a trail of damage left behind San Antonio police responding to the scene of shattered glass and crushed metal. It's next on the night beat. A line of cars ending up in harm's way. San Antonio police say a woman who was speeding crashed into the cars which were waiting in a traffic light. This is on the northeast side of town on Weedner and Warsbach Parkway. After hitting those vehicles, police say the woman veered off the road and up into a grassy embankment. The woman, along with another driver, were taken to the hospital. Both are expected to be okay. Investigators are still trying to figure out if any other factors led to this crash. The FDA looking into booster shots for COVID-19 vaccines. The booster plan for at-risk populations could be ready within weeks. ABC's Morgan Norwood reports medical and government agencies are pushing for vaccinations as the highly contagious Delta variant spreads. As the Delta variant takes aim at America, dominating the caseload across the country, the FDA expected to recommend a plan for vaccine booster shots for immunocompromised individuals, reportedly within weeks. We are now working on that and will make that be implemented as quickly as possible. Seven states with some of the country's lowest vaccination rates, now accounting for about half of new cases and hospitalizations in the past week. The patients are coming in younger, sicker, and unfortunately, sometimes they are expiring quicker. Florida also has the second most number of children hospitalized with COVID only after Texas. The Florida governor once again leaning into his ban on mask mandates in schools. What are the harmful effects of putting a kindergartner in a mask for seven hours? Have they talked about the emotional, the academic, the physiological? 25% of hospitalizations in the country are in Florida. It is also a fact that the governor has taken steps that are counter, counter to public health recommendations. In New Jersey, the governor set to announce a mask requirement for students from kindergarten to 12th grade Friday. It's been pretty scary, actually. 17-year-old David Espino fighting the virus from his hospital bed, his mother with a message. I would definitely encourage them to get their kids vaccinated if they're eligible. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, mosquito repellent is usually sprayed on to keep the critters away, but if you're not a fan of sprays, there's another product that suggests it may shield you from, shield you and your patio. The Thermacell Patio Shield promises to create a 15-foot zone of protection. Bug expert Mark Vanderwerp set it up, turned it on. It's a cordless device. It emits a DEET-free repellent vapor. After the full 15-minute wait time, they say they noticed a big change. 12 on your sides. Marilyn Moritz has more details on this gadget on our website, ksat.com. Of course, Vanderbilt reminds you the best way to keep mosquitoes away is to get rid of any standing water. We would definitely need that this summer, especially with all the rain that we've gotten. We got some more rain today. That means I got to go empty those, you know, toys out in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, the kids, you've got young ones. It's the kids' toys. Definitely they accumulate it. Even just a Frisbee. You know, upside down, we'll get it. I, I know even uh, leaves, like magnolia leaves, the bigger ones that are resting on the ground, when they've got water in them, they can help the mosquitoes reproduce. They lay a lot of larvae in there. It does look like we'll get a break from the rain here in the days of, ahead. As for the weekend, sunny and seasonable. Check out this stat. Only 1% of Texas now in drought. The drought monitor is updated every Thursday. There's a little sliver of Texas down near Big Bend National Park that still has a minor drought and that's it. So let's talk about everything that's happening. First of all, the rainfall from earlier today, it was coming down hard in some locations, especially Southern Bear County and down near Zavala County, even into Dimmick County. Look at some of those accumulations. Of course, as usual with rain, some folks don't even get a drop while other folks get several inches. Somerset measured over three inches. Von Army about three inches as well. Elmendorf nearly two inches. The key here though is just southwest of San Antonio. I mean, we're talking rainfall estimates 
of four to eight inches just east of Crystal City and outside of Carrizo Springs and down into southern Maverick County. Unfortunately, we don't have any accessible rain gauges out here. We have to rely on the radar estimates, but they're usually pretty good and pretty close to accurate. Currently, you look at the radar. We've got a little bit of activity out there right now, just north of Qu Quero. A little shower popped up. Pleasanton and just outside of Jordanton, a little downpour, which had some lightning and thunder. You could actually see the lightning from San Antonio when you're looking south. That's dissipating. And then between Pearsall and Catula, just east of I-35, a little bit of activity that's starting to wind down as well. Nonetheless, we're still in an active weather pattern, and that means a few more pop-up showers can be expected tonight and even periodically during the day tomorrow. This frontal boundary stalled to the south of us, that's still there, and it really acts as the focal point to help just lift the atmosphere enough to get some showers and thunderstorms going. Not only that, earlier today in particular, we got extra energy from a few disturbances out there. Now it's just one big long dip in the upper level flow, but a few little swirls in particular, and this one that came in from Mexico earlier this morning really helped to generate some of those showers and storms. Going forward, only isolated chances tomorrow, so about 30%. So most of us will probably not see rain. A few of us will, about 30% of us. But where it does rain, of course, it could come down pretty hard for a brief period of time. Into the weekend, not even a chance. Next week, just a few of those typical pop-up showers closer to the Gulf coastline. So next week around San Antonio, pretty much a 0% chance. As for today, officially at the airport, a quarter of an inch. And check this out. Not your typical August temperature spread here. 73 in the morning, 88 for the high temperature today. The average high is 97 and climatologically speaking, it's the hottest time of year. This is the warmest average high we see all year long. 79 right now feels like 82 and you factor in the mugginess. 75 in Uvalde, Catula at 80, Kerrville 76. Often at 10 o'clock we look at this map and some locations are still around 90 degrees, but instead we're talking 70s, Bandera 76, Converse 77 along with Seguin and temperatures to start the day tomorrow should mostly be in the mid 70s, rising into the lower 90s, so still running below average with those isolated or widely separated pop up showers here and there. Southeasterly breeze, by the way, at 5 to 10. This weekend, nothing but sunshine, mid 90s, mid 90s is going to last all the way through next week. It's that time of year. It's not uncommon to hit 100, but that's still not in the forecast. Good pool weather this that, weekend. That's great news, Adam. Thanks very much. Greg Simmons here now with sports and Greg, Jimmy Jones, uh, Jerry Jones, Jimmy Johnson continuing their reconciliation. Tour. Yeah, the reconciliation tour, if you will. He's going into the Hall of Fame this weekend. That is, of course, Jimmy Johnson. He's also going in to the Cowboys Ring of Honor, albeit 25 years plus later. And when we come back, the Roadrunners kick off their fall camp in their brand new facility coming up. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. After it's canceled last season due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the NFL's Hall of Fame game back with the Cowboys and the Steelers tonight in Canton, Ohio. Former Dallas Cowboys head coach Jimmy Johnson getting a nice round of applause from the crowd prior to the game as a member of the class of 2020. Cowboys defense already making plays on the opening drive. Mason Rudolph fumbles the ball. First round draft pick Micah Parsons jumps on it for the first turnover of the game. With Dak Prescott still in Oxnard nursing his sore shoulder, Garrett Gilbert and a quarterback hits tight end Dalton Schultz with the very next play for 15 yards. Gilbert finished 9 of 13 for 104 but couldn't find the end zone. As Dallas settles for this 29 yard field goal for Hunter Nicewagner and an early 3 0 lead. That was a score at halftime. Third quarter, Steelers find the end zone first. Kalen Balage powers in for the four-yard score. Extra point is no good. Six or three Pittsburgh. Cowboys look to answer on the ensuing drive, but Ben DiNucci's pass intercepted. Cowboys held out of the end zone tonight. The final 16 to three. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones always likes to save the big announcements when he's on national TV. Tonight was no different. He chose the moment to announce that Jimmy Johnson will finally be inducted into the Cowboys ring of honor. No date has been given so far, but when it happens, Johnson will be become the 23rd member of the Ring of Honor and just the second head coach, second only to Tom Landry. Johnson coached the Cowboys for five seasons, winning two Super Bowls for Jerry Jones. Former Dallas Cowboys lineman and center Joe Looney has decided to retire. This comes after he spent just five days with the Giants after signing with New York. There was a massive brawl in camp on Tuesday, but is not believed to have been a factor 
in his decision to step away. Looney was a fan and team favorite in Dallas with a big smile, stepped in for the retired Travis Frederick at center at last season, sharing time with a rookie Tyler Biotish, who takes over as a starter this season. Today was the first day we had an opportunity to hear from defensive back Jonathan Owens. He's a safety for the Houston Texans, but he's also the boyfriend of U.S. gymnast Simone Biles. Biles withdrew from nearly every event at the 2020 Olympics due to mental health issues after attempting the vault. She was not happy with the results, decided she would be risking injury if she continues. She did compete in the final event, individual event, winning a bronze on the balance beam. How did that affect him having to watch from afar? It was kind of tough. It was actually the longest that we've uh, been apart since we first started dating and everything. But um, I was just making sure I was there. Been an extra voice for us and she couldn't have family and everything there. So um, just kind of keeping her positive and keeping her motivated. And um, when things kind of got tough, just, you know, being an extra voice for us, just making sure everything stay positive. All right, Team USA is headed to the gold medal game after they were able to knock off Patty Mills and the Australian national team in the semifinals of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics today. But not before Australia got out to an eight-point lead in the first quarter, led by Patty Mills, who scored 15 points. That lead, by the way, would expand to 15 in the second quarter until Team USA staged their comeback in the third quarter, led by Kevin Durant with 23 points, Devin Booker with 20. The Americans went on a 15-2 run where Booker scored eight at the Team USA's 15 points. They would hold the lead from there, and they win at 97. 78. It's great to see Pop and Patty hug at the end of the game since Mills now plays for the Brooklyn Nets. UTSA Roadrunners open up their fall camp at a brand new facility next. UTSA quarterback Frank Harris has landed on another watch list, this time on the Manning Award preseason watch list sponsored by the All-State Sugar Bowl. He is the lone conference USA selection to be on that list, created in honor of the football accomplishments of Archie Payton and Eli Manning. Harris is also on the Davey O'Brien National Quarterback Award list after playing in 15 games, starting 14 over the past two seasons, and holds the school record for completions at 66%. UTSA running back Sincere McCormick has been named to the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award watch list. This latest honor comes just one week after Sincere was named to the watch list for the Walter Camp Player of the Year Award. That adds to his list of Maxwell and Doak Walker Awards in addition to being voted the 2021 Conference USA Preseason Offensive Player of the Year. The Judson High School product is coming off a record-breaking year where he earned the Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year, setting new single-season marks in rushing yards, touchdowns, carries, rushing yards per game, and all-purpose yards. The Roadrunners football team opened fall camp today, one day after debuting their new race facility. That stands for Roadrunners Athletic Center of Excellence a state-of-the-art $41 million facility that includes two practice fields. They will hold their first practice tomorrow. Today, head coach Jeff Trailer welcomed back his team to get ready to start his second season. We only got one team rule. Uh, you know, be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, doing what you're supposed to do with perfect effort. And that pretty much covers all of it. So we'll get all that done, and we'll get some individual meetings, uh, and then we'll be ready to roll tomorrow. All right, that's first practice again is tomorrow. Their first game will be on September the 4th at Illinois, so they open up on the road. And don't forget the Haney & Company Charity Golf Tournament at the Quarry on Monday, August the 23rd to benefit St. Vinny's Bistro that feeds the homeless of Bear County. Tea time is at 8 a.m. at the Quarry. And to register, you can go to HaneyCPAs.com slash golf fundraiser and knock it out of the park. All right, sounds like a good time. You got it. All right, Greg, thanks. We'll be right back. Okay, check this out. A California man considers his Amazon delivery driver an angel. Mark Cutlip reached out to police and social media after his truck and trailer were stolen. On a whim, Cutlip also showed his Amazon delivery driver a photo of the stolen property and asked him to keep an eye out. That night, he got a call from the driver, Henry Martinez Jr. He found the truck and trailer about a mile away. Cutlip says that means there's still good people out there. They are on the road a lot, so... I would guess they would see a lot of cars. That's a good idea. If you have something big, yeah. Amazon delivery drivers. All right, temperature wise, we'll be in the upper 80s to low 90s tomorrow afternoon. 93 Del Rio, 89 Kerrville, Canyon Lake about 90. Get to Elmendorf, 90 degrees and Bernie, 88 for a high. A few isolated pop-up showers and storms can't be ruled out both tonight and tomorrow. Then this weekend, good pool weather, Patty. Good pool weather, <laughs> sunny mid 90s. <laughs> That's where you'll find me. Thanks for joining us. That does it for the night beat. Good morning, San Antonio starts at 430. Have a great night.